it is it's me <laughs> i've literally had this car <laughs> for a minute and i was hesitant to like post it because <clears throat> i don't know i don't i mean it's it's not like i'm the only person with the with the ghibli or ghibli or whatever the fuck they say it but um yeah i just you know you get kind of leery and scary about things like that but anyway i'm so excited because i've had the car and i wasn't sure if i wanted to share it on social media but like guys like if you know me this is my dream car and i had um i had one before and i had to um sell it because it was like one of the first ones that came out like when they first came out with the new model and um it once it went over 50,000 miles and the warranty was done that car literally had a problem like every week so and it was really expensive to maintain these cars like if you know anything about these Italian cars the parts are not cheap okay they are not cheap so it was a lot of maintenance and I was like you know what I cannot keep this car and at the time you know my son was a lot younger so we opted to um just get something that was a little bit more reliable and I went you know back to Lexus and I had that truck for a while but yeah I'm back in my back in my baby I love her it's a little bit more masculine than I would have liked I really like a white car or an all black car but this smoky gray with the red calipers and like the red <gasps> like I'm just so in love with this car and I'm just so happy that um, I could get myself back into it. But anyway, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Not being braggadocious, just really like happy that um, that this could even like, you know, I work really hard. So yeah, but I'm really, really excited about it. Um, yeah, so I have a bunch of stuff to do today. Today I'm filming today I'm recording but I need like a little pick-me-up because I'm feeling really like low energy even though I'm talking like a maniac um so I'm heading over to Starbucks as usual like everybody Starbucks of course is that even that goes without saying right so I'm heading to Starbucks I'm gonna get something to give me a little bit of energy I'm gonna go home record um yeah I, do you guys care do you guys want to see me record like I don't think you guys have ever really seen my studio set up. So anyway, yeah. So that's what we're doing. And then we can talk a little bit about what's going on with the smoke shop. Because I know everybody's interested in that. Y'all been hitting me up like, Jill, da da da, da. I'm going to get into all of the tea about the smoke shop. But let me get something to drink first. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. my phone is gonna die guys we are at the shop probably one of the last times you're gonna see me here with the shop full because somebody is coming to buy all the remaining inventory because guess what we are closing um I got myself activated because let me turn this down before I get a copyright flag yes I'm listening to soft rock don't judge me you don't know my life but anyway guys this is probably gonna be one of the last times that you're gonna see the store the smoke shop with inventory in it because somebody's coming today to buy all of the leftover inventory that we have because we are closing the shop i know it's um it's bittersweet it's uh i don't even know where to start with the explanation to be completely honest but within the last okay well let's just back it up so you guys remember when i did my um one year anniversary post about the shop um and things were going really good we were excited about year two i was really excited about where things were gonna go and then a smoke shop opened down the street probably about half a mile 
And then the neighbors that we had that had the roll your own tobacco store, they converted their store into a smoke shop and they're like literally like maybe 500 feet next door. And then across the street, you can probably see from my store. Yeah, you can actually see the other smoke shop from here. Um, they opened another smoke shop right across the street from me. So, um, yeah, the writing was basically on the wall. I did not want to renew my lease for another year with that kind of competition all the way around me. Plus, you know, with um, the two other smoke shops that had opened in the area, we really did start to see a hit in our numbers. I started to um, really see that our numbers were not, we weren't performing where I would have liked us to. I mean, first year, second year, okay, cool. But going into the third year, I was just like, uh-uh, this is not gonna work. Mm. So initially we tried to sell the business, but anybody with half a brain that came, drove by here or even came to check out the business while they liked the store and they liked, you know, that we had a customer base, etc. Um, they liked the vibe, but they were like, well, there's a shop across the street, there's a shop next door, there's a shop down the street, there's a shop across the street from that store that's down the street. Um, what the fuck? And I don't blame them. So the decision that we made was to go ahead and close down this location, liquidate all the inventory and just, you know, mitigate risk, mitigate our losses. And I don't know, maybe we'll do it again in another location. I'm not sure. But as of right now, Grow House One is officially closed. This location is permanently closed. So today the buyers are coming by to pick up all the rest of the inventory. I'm just gonna kind of like help them pack up some of the stuff. It's not like, it's not, no one's gonna die, but um, I'm just gonna kind of get a jump start on it for them. So that way they can just grab and go because I do not want to be here all night. I really don't, but yeah, I'm really, really, um, We'll talk more about it, but it's like a bittersweet kind of moment because you guys know I poured a lot into this shop. I really did enjoy um, building it out and meeting all of these great people and really like getting my feet wet um, as a retail business owner because I've never done retail before. And it was a pretty much a great learning experience, but I wanna, guy I wanna take you guys on the journey of like actually winding down a business because I feel like what we see a lot online are people's success stories. We see everyone making millions of dollars and you never really get to see the side of like a failed business. And let's just keep it a stack. It's a failed business is a failed business. Like this just did not work out, right? And most businesses fail within their first five years. So let's just see what it is to wind up a business. Um, I'm not above saying that I tried something and it didn't work. And like I said, I think with everything that's happened with Grow House, I think I need a little bit of a break. Um, so I'm gonna take some time off from this smoke stuff. I mean, I still have my smoke legal clients that I'm gonna continue to assist and work with. Um, but yeah, I think I need a break from, from this for a little bit to kind of recalibrate uh, figure out what my next plan of action is going to be and you know keep my eyes open if I do see another location That's like prime location and I tell you what I'm gonna keep it a whole stack with you What that what I always say about location and what my mentor says and what everybody Bitch it is so true because your location means everything and and with this experience now I also want to make sure that wherever we go in terms of moving the store or opening up another location the city can guarantee me that it's not going to issue another tobacco license to another business that's in close proximity to me there's absolutely no way um because i feel like the city of margate they're on the bullshit and for them it's just revenue generating shit and that's why in this particular city and i'm rambling at this point in this particular city, businesses never stay. You have a handful of them that have been here for a really, really long time, but businesses pop up and they leave, pop up and they leave because the city, they do bullshit like this. <laughs> Basically allows a competitor to open right next door to you and um, they just take their fees um, and they really don't care what happens to you. So in the next go around, if there is a next go around, one of my main questions for the city 
um, and zoning is whether or not there is a cap on the number of licenses they issue for certain types of businesses and how close they can be to one another because I'm not I'm not playing this game again. Like I'm not I'm not. We're about we're we're about learning from our mistakes. We're about learning and growing and for everything that happens there is a lesson to be learned and this is one of those lessons. And um I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. It's what's going to make me a seasoned entrepreneur and you know what I'm saying these are the breaks. These are the learning hmm the rolling pain so yeah i'm just waiting for these people to come and so we could pack this stuff up and they can you know take my inventory and you know generate some revenue for their business and take their business to a different level um because they're getting a liquidated liquidated inventory because i know what they're paying for it i ain't pay for that i paid a lot more but <laughs> whatever it is what it is anyway guys yeah we'll chat okay we got so many things to chat about actually hey y'all so we are here at the shop i'm waiting for the painters to come because um we've got to paint all of these walls back like prime them and put them back to the original color it was originally like this really light blue that you see back here it kind of looks white but that was the original color so i'm going to see if the painters can actually match that if they can't match it then we'll just have to like prime it white but i'm pretty sure they're going to be able to um to match it but yeah you guys so we are in the process of winding everything down um you know cutting off i look like complete crap how about we do this because i look terrible whenever i'm here for whatever reason i feel like lately sorry the last like i don't know six months or so when i'm here at the shop it gives me anxiety like i'm really stressed out about it but anyway um so yeah i'm not sure if i included it in this um this vlog but we sold all the inventory to the neighboring smoke shop so they came over um, we liquidated everything so the shop is just like empty so all of the display cases are pretty much empty like you can see everything is just yeah there's nothing on the displays there's nothing in the cubbies everything is off of the walls all of the all of the shelving is gone we took the shelving down and packed it up um, I think someone is coming to buy all of these display cases and like the display tables and stuff that we had all the inventory on someone's coming to buy that um the fridge this is really <laughs> what's really interesting is i get to keep these little fridges and coolers so i'll probably just take them and put them in my garage or on my patio for like when we have parties and stuff but the grass wall is down as well we just stack them up here um took down pretty much all of the signage except the big like the marquee sign that's on the top of the building that sign is still up i'm probably gonna sell that too but we've got like all of these little staples in the wall so hopefully those guys the painters can come and they can pull all that stuff out yeah but guys this is what it's looking like it's really empty and it's actually a little bit sad <laughs> i'm not gonna lie but um, well, i don't know who that is if those are the painters i think the painters are here yep let me go. All right, so let's talk about what happened with the smoke shop. So as I mentioned, I know I closed the smoke shop um, and it was really like, it was really a hard decision. It, well, it wasn't, it wasn't right because the smoke shop was like a great creative outlet for me. It was, um, I had a lot of fun building it out, meeting people, um, getting the inventory, doing all the fun stuff, um, going to all the trade shows, all of the things that we did for the smoke shop. I had such a good time doing it and that was what I really enjoyed about the business. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that aspect of it. But listen, um, the summer hit, like that early summer part, that came around and like our numbers were suffering. Like I mentioned, they opened a smoke shop across the street from me and honestly i feel like the person that opened that smoke shop actually knew me um 
and may have even come to the store because what a lot of people uh, do and what I found out later was they kind of scout around and they look at other smoke shops and they kind of come and see what your inventory is what your foot traffic is they come and kind of check you out and then they go and they try to like do some cutthroat shit right so that smoke shop opened in the plaza across the street from me and then we had that roll your own tobacco store that was like two plazas over it was basically like a plaza because there's one building in between my plaza and their plaza and it had always been a roll your own tobacco um store or whatever but um the owner of that store when i opened my store they came over and they were like oh well we want to know who opened a smoke shop near us and i was like listen like i've already been to your store because i scoped them too child i did the dirty but all they were doing was roll your own tobacco that's it that's all they were doing like you could go get loose tobacco you could get the papers to roll your cigarettes all that stuff they had no vape they had no glass they had no cbd they had none of the things that we had so that owner when he came over we had a conversation and um he was like you know i'm not gonna i don't know anything about this industry the industry that you're in i don't really want to touch it what we're into is roll your own that's what i know and that's what we're going to stick to and they had a very consistent um like flow of customers that used to come into their store i used to see it and sometimes when they weren't open their customers would come to my store and i would be like hey you know i don't have those products next door has it they're open you know whenever i would just i would push them their way so we had sort of like an unwritten kind of understanding about not touching each other's businesses so we could coexist on the same block without you know bothering each other so um i never sold cigarettes in the store i never sold um i never sold roll your own tobacco stuff in the store either i always stuck to regular smoke shop stuff right but then from what i come to understand somebody they ended up selling the store or an opportunity arose for them to sell the store to an employee the employee didn't have the money so then she got an investor and then the investor decided that they wanted to open up a smoke shop um without really understanding like who their neighbors were i don't know why they did that um but whatever i ended up i had already made the decision because it was just too much too many smoke shops were opening up literally within a mile of each other less than a mile um in the city of margate and i was like i don't understand why the city would do this i was so freaking upset because i'm like you're setting everybody up for failure it really pissed me off i'm not even gonna lie to you because i started seeing smoke shops like one after another one after another like open up within a mile of each other sometimes like less than a mile opening up and i'm like how is this helping the small businesses in this city because we're direct competitors like there should be a cap on the number of licenses that you can give out in a year or two years or whatever and there should be a distance requirement like you can't like you can't open up um a, a gas station or um um you can't have like three gas stations or four gas stations on each corners in some jurisdictions you can, you're only limited to two competing ones or like you can't have a supermarket right next door to another supermarket like type type of shit like that there's zoning laws and ordinances for that i guess the city of the city that i'm located in or was located in didn't have that which i think is really stupid for a small business i mean with larger chain businesses i can understand people are loyal to Publix, people are loyal loyal to trader joe's like you have the demographic for both where they can coexist in the same you know plaza or in the same block and it'd be fine but for small businesses like us it's very difficult to compete when you're selling the exact same products it's not it, it's i just thought it was really stupid anyway so i saw kind of started seeing that happen and my lease was up um within a few months and it was time to renew the lease i did have an option to renew um and i really considered renewing the lease i really 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 thought about it like deep in my heart i was like jill you know you should really go into year three and you should really you know rock out with your like rock out with your cock out like really show them who's boss like the community loves you you've got a great customer base that adores you um there's a couple of things that i needed to tweak definitely as far as my inventory goes and employees and i talked about that on my last video but i really thought that i could do it but the writing was on the wall child the writing was on the wall like i saw it coming and of course 
there are more smoke shops being opened in the city, of course, and even neighboring cities like down the block on 441, they're even allowing smoke shops to open um, in their cities when they never used to want that before. Because I remember looking in those cities and there were like whole bans on on smoke shops within certain um, certain zones in the municipality. So they're opening up and there's a lot of competition. So I say all that to say, yeah, that was definitely one factor. And then um, I think there was a, a lot of mismanagement on my part in terms of employees and the way that I was running the business. I think if I were to do it over again, I would handle things quite differently. I would probably get a business manager and have them oversee the day-to-day -day operations, just report the numbers to me, make sure that they're keeping on top of inventory because running my law firm, running my practice and my consultancy, I didn't always have the, um, the time and attention to dedicate to certain aspects of the smoke shop business as I would have liked because let's just call a spade a spade. Okay, the law firm, my consultancy, makes a ton more a ton more money than the smoke shop ever did. Um, I was hoping that we would have gotten to smoke shop number two or number three, but the law firm definitely took precedence, and my clients took precedence over the smoke shop business because I thought I could trust my employees. But it's not anybody like an external factor or an external person's fault per se. It's not. It wasn't premised on one thing only there were a lot of things that went into me closing the shop but ultimately the location the city um things that were going on within the store uh competition there was a lot of factors that led me to the decision to close the store that doesn't mean i'm never going to open one and it doesn't mean that i'm a failure i felt like that for a while and i had to kind of talk myself out of that but you know what businesses they come and they go businesses fail some of them succeed and you know unfortunately a lot of businesses don't work out within the first five years i'm perfectly aware of that being in the business that i'm in um, I think I took a chance on retail and it, it didn't go well this time, but that doesn't mean it's not going to go well next time. So I do have hopes to and plans to open another retail location, but um, I think I'm going to actually wait for the recession to hit and I have my own personal reasons for waiting for that. But if you know, you know, guys, the recession is a good time to make some offers on things and get um, pretty good pricing so we'll see how that goes I'm not gonna jump into anything now I definitely know for the future that if I were to do another retail location child I'm getting the best location that I could possibly find and I'm definitely definitely gonna find out about um, limitations on licenses to other similar retail stores because I don't ever want another situation where I have a competitor right across the street from me and a competitor in the neighboring plaza like i don't ever want to deal with that again luckily i have other things going on i didn't you know lose my whole life in the shop but i just wanted to be completely transparent with you guys about that i know that anybody that lives locally that's driven by or came to the store before or met me before you've probably drove by and noticed that we weren't open so i know you probably had questions but here we are i'm here to answer them but yeah, I mean, onward and upward. Here go the dolls. I knew they were gonna do that. But I feel like people who um, have gone by the store and noticed that I wasn't there, um, and that, you know, wanted to be mean folks about it. I think, you know, people made assumptions and whatever. I honestly, I don't really care. Like, I took a risk on myself. I gambled on myself, and I will always do that. I will. 100% back whatever it is that I'm gonna do because I know that I'm willing to take a risk a lot of people are not right so if you are in a situation where you tried to start a business and it didn't work out don't beat yourself up about it and don't listen to any hater that's trying to knock you for taking a risk on yourself gamble on yourself who else are you gonna gamble on the best person to gamble on is yourself so yeah I say all that to say that you know I'm keeping it moving it is what it is and we're on to the next and hopefully you guys are here with me for the next step in my journey, the next chapter, but I'm super excited and about my car and I'm super excited about what I'm able to do with Dual Career Law and my consultancy, Grow Solutions. Um, 
really happy about that. So the future is bright, y'all. So don't worry about me. Um, yeah, so 